So Young, it is an absolute pleasure to have you with us today on Future Summits Online, the future of the future. I couldn't wait to do this interview with you. I saw you, I think it was either two or three years ago, you came to speak at our speaker association and I was blown away by your company. I was blown away by you. You're an absolutely remarkable human being and what you've accomplished uh, in, in the area of training and creating platforms and technology. And even then, three years ago, it was, it was so future thinking, it was so forward thinking that, yeah, I, I had to jump on it and be like, this is an amazing product, this is an amazing service you guys offer. And I had to invite you to the summit because especially now during, during COVID and um, the way the world is changing, your product is just kind of coming to its own. It's like, okay, this is what we designed it for, guys. We're ready, come and take hold of us. So it's a great pleasure to have you. I know who you are. I've done a lot of research about you as well, which is my pleasure to find out more about you. But there are still some people in the world who don't know who So Young is and don't know who Nobi is. So just a little bit of an introduction as to how you got to where you are and uh, and why you created this product. So it's really a delight to be here. Thank you so much for having me. You know, obviously, um, you know, we've known each other for a few years, and so. Um, you know, as an entrepreneur, we're always thinking about the future and how we can solve problems, you know, using technologies um, in the best way possible. So uh, I'm the founder of Nobi. Nobi stands for grow knowledge into being because it's all it's not about just what you know. It's about what you're able to apply and, um, and um, into your life and make that part of your being. We are a mobile micro learning platform and authoring tool. So anyone can create content on our platform and organizations and individuals use our platform to better engage, train, and connect with communities around the world, whether it's your sales team or whether it's your members in multiple countries around the world. It's a delight to be here. Absolutely fantastic to have you. Okay, so this is the big question I wanted to ask you for such a long time now. How did this spark? How did this idea come to being and how did it manifest? Because I heard a little bit about your history as like, um, all the research that went into this, all the, all the science that went into this. I'd love to share that with, uh, with the audience right now, if that's okay. Yeah, sure. So, um, so I'm a big nerd. I'm a huge nerd. And, um, I, I, and, I, and I don't believe in technology for the sake of technology. You know, I, I think I believe in intentional design. And technology should be used to solve a real problem. And if you're going to solve a real problem, you should research, I think, what the problem is and best practices of how to solve that problem, right? So I take a very scientific approach. And so when we looked at the, the idea of content, and I, and I even want to go beyond just learning into content itself. Why do people who are busy adults engage with any content? And what is the motivation they have to do that when we're all so busy, right? And when it comes to improving ourselves, improving our productivity and performance, why do we do it? And so when we did that user, we did a lot of ethnographic research, interviewing all ages, different countries, different segments to find out what motivates you to do that in the midst of your very, very busy day. And we found six different personas, which I thought were really interesting. Um, you know, many people think that most people are just motivated to learn for the sake of learning. Unfortunately, that's not really the case. There is a segment of a population, but, you know, even I am not one of those. You know, my persona is more the selective persona. I pick and choose whatever I need to know. If it's an article, if it's a video, if it's something that I think will help me improve my performance, I will read it, I'll do it, I'll study it. You know, and that, that's maybe my persona. But there are different kinds of personas. The point being is that when you're designing technology, you can't assume that everyone is like you. I think that's one of the biggest challenges is you think the whole world is just like you. I would have designed a very different platform if I assumed everyone was like me. But I understand that there are people who are really motivated to learn because they just are curious. There are other people motivated to just achieve, achieve, right? Uh, there are people who are motivated to compete and to be better than someone else, but whatever that, you know? So as you think about those motivations, you do that. And then on the back of that, we studied levels of human development and what really helps people to engage, which we know is not just knowing things. The art of learning is about knowing things, thinking about them, applying and sharing them. Simple philosophy. Like, you know, in sales, you can't just watch a video of someone selling and go, oh, I'm going to be a great salesperson. I watch the video. I got to think about it. Most importantly, I got to apply it, practice it every single day, share it and get feedback. That's how I improve. And that's how I improve my performance. And that's how I can be at my best. 
I get coached, I get mentored. And so that, that philosophy and that science, 30 years of research went into the design you know, of the technology. The technology came after the research. And of course, we have, yeah, I'm sorry. And just, and of course we say, and just, you know, on top of that, you take the research and then you basically leverage what is the best, latest technology out there that will help to bring that research to life in an applied way. So you do take the latest and greatest on tech, right? And then you bring that in. And, and that's why I was going to go with this as well, because like I said, you did, you did all this amazing research, but then you said, okay, so what is available now that we can implement into the research so we can marry the two together and create a phenomenal product. And as I said before, when it first came out, um, I, I kind of got this impression like people are just not going to get it. <laughs> They're just not going to get it because it's just so, uh, so unique and so, uh, so forward thinking, so futuristic. They were like, but how? And yet you've leveraged on all the habits that people have in these days using technology in order to make this, this, this amazing platform where people can learn so easily, so uh, hassle-free, so intuitively. Um, just speak about that, please, if possible, for a short while. That was, that was amazing to me, to be honest. Oh, thank you. Um, I think when we take the human experience, and, and I always talk about the, I lead with the human experience. So if you are a coach, a trainer, a speaker like you, right, or um, an author, um, uh, you basically have a way that you do things face to face. So you have a group of people, your associates, your trainees, uh, whoever, you know, your, if you're the CEO, your employees, you have a group of people. How do you engage with them face to face? Let's start there first. You take that experience and there are people who are amazing communicators and there's some that are not so amazing, right? The amazing ones don't just take PowerPoint and give you a bunch of bullets, right? The amazing ones do animations, you know, polls, they go back and forth. They give you, they tell you a joke, right? They, they ask you questions in the audience. They, 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 you know, solicit kind of that kind of feedback. So you take that amazing experience. The technology then was designed to allow the person to do exactly what they do, but in a digital form. Tell a joke, engage, ask for a poll, engage with a video, inspire them with a quote, ask them a question, get them to give you feedback, share it in community. So the entire the platform was designed to scale and digitize that human experience. Absolutely fantastic. And I, I, I know about Nobi as well, and I see how it's constantly evolving and constantly getting better and constantly improving. And one of the beautiful things that you guys do is that you engage really well with your clients with the people who are using the platform in order to get feedback how is this working for you any suggestions anything you can change and uh, yeah. and i love that you're going to the people who are using the thing to figure out what to do next and how to prove things rather than having a a think tank separate from the the client base and think oh we think they need this and we think they need that you're literally asking them so that's that's created an amazing amazing product thank okay. you um we're really passionate about kind of user insights. And I always tell people that data always is, speaks louder than my opinion. You know, my opinion is interesting, um, but user data is actually much more important. And that's the power of technology. You have just tons of data analytics and insights, and that should really be driving your business decisions. I absolutely love that. And if, you, if you've ever seen my tagline, I think you can resonate with where it's like, it says, change driven by data, powered by human experience or human, human connection. Absolutely. Which... Completely. And that's why, that's, why, that's why we get along so well. <laughs> because we have <laughs> philosophy, right? Absolutely. Okay. So um, going back to what's relevant to us today, the future of work has dramatically shifted and, uh, and some will not return to pre-COVID times. And engagement um, from onboarding to upskilling to communications, uh, etc., will be very different. So, based on your data, based on your your engagement with your clients, etc., how do you see this evolving in the next I don't know six months, one year, two years, etc., or all the way into the future? Because things have changed; they will not go back to how they were. No, it's it's really probably the one of the biggest questions you know that many leaders are facing right now, I'm having, we're having daily conversations with leaders around the world. Um, and I don't think some things are ever going to go back. You know, we're living in the new low touch economy. And the new low touch economy is going to have significant impacts. 
um, I think more to mindsets as well as, of course, processes and practices. So the mind, so in terms of onboarding your people, people are being interviewed, onboarded, and having to learn how to do a new job right now without ever having met before, right? And people are recognizing that there are a lot of efficiencies and productivity improvements that they're seeing as a result of that if they can figure out not just the, the new mindset, but the new skills required to still do that while maintaining a human connection. So I think there's going to be multiple phases of this in terms of uh, capa mindset shifting and capability building, and then understanding technology and how technology should play a role to support that. Um, I think what we should not be doing, what some people are doing, and I think you know it's, it's a natural reaction is that, oh my gosh, we have to go virtual. Let's go get technology and throw it and slap it on. But we don't really think through. We say, we're going to Zoom everything. And now you're seeing a few months later, people are Zoom fatigued. They're Zoomed out. So we say, okay, well, we're going to use Zoom, but how are we going to use Zoom and maybe other technologies, whether it's Adobe or something else, to create a more human connection where we're mixing up um, the experience and we're not talking at people. We're engaging with people. Let's go find technologies that are more humanizing and then figure out how we bring that into. So I think that's going to be like the next generation. And again, futuristic, like we're looking kind of at the current and the future trend is I think the hope that people are starting to now evolve into the next gen, which is now humanizing tech, and then think rethinking their processes. So now upskilling, um, instead of just doing a group of 20 at a time, you can do 20,000. That's cool. Yes, Are you ever cool. going to go back, right? Are you ever going to go back and you can do it in a synchronous or you can do it in an asynchronous anytime, anywhere? So now you have employees in 100 countries. Do you want to force them to all wait two years or one year to go through your training? Or do you use digital platforms in order to engage upskilling, right? And now the technology is so advanced, you can do assessments, pretty robust assessments, project-based reviews and assessments. So it's not just multiple choice questions anymore. It's gone beyond that. And so now the idea is, wow, you might even be able to do a better job assessing um, someone's performance without even seeing them face to face. Not to say that we should replace the human experience, but definitely to enhance. So I don't think there's gonna be, um, I think there's gonna be a lot of things that, that are actually never gonna go back to what they were before. And, and, and I think the reason for them, they're never gonna go back to the way before is because now you're given a chance by necessity to try out new technologies, new ways of doing things, and have found them to be much more productive and much more efficient and much more uh, effective in so many ways. So there's no reason to go back to the way they were. And I'm sure the, the big question in everybody's mind right now is like, okay, taking technology and humanizing it, how? Okay, how? So just give us about a little bit about how you guys are strategizing to make that happen um, in, in, in your organization or what you are seeing around the world as well as uh, uh, to m merge yeah. those two elements together. I, I think I'll answer that by sharing kind of two stories. Yeah. So um, we were in COVID um, and in COVID we had, we were feeling isolated. We were feeling disconnected. You know, emotional and mental health issues are emerging. So what we said is, you know, we want to connect the humans of the world together from different parts of the world, different countries. We created this very simple free program called Daily Pulse. Everyone's welcome to try it. It's free. We took influencers around the world. We had them create a 10-minute bite of inspiration sharing how they're experiencing um, kind of this isolate, this, this life during COVID. We connected and met with different people around the world. I've made new friends on the platform as we have the shared experience. These are people by having the shared experience and by sharing it in community um, are people I never would have met before from the Philippines, from Africa, from the US, from Canada, from Europe. You know, it's amazing, right? And so that's, that's one story of how humanizing tech in community and you took the topic of early pulse of the world and, and we use that as the catalyst for connecting humans. That's one story. We take a webinar experience. And now you take a webinar, you might have hundreds, thousands of people joining this webinar. And normally, in, back in the day, in the face-to-face in the, in the -face days, we went to these conferences to interact and network with each other. And now, as we've 
digitized that we're not able to have that same networking experience because even as a speaker, I can't see the names of the people who um, are listening to the webinar. So now when we take a webinar experience, you have all of the slides basically put into Novi. So it's all Novified. All the content is there. The polls, data collection is there, which is really important for the organizer. And more importantly, as a participant, I have a whole group, a list that I can private message. I can network with them now. I can connect with them because now we have a shared interest. Our shared interest is maybe future summits. And I can connect and have dialogue and connection with them about that topic. And so there's a context for human connection. And so we're starting to see a lot more of that human experience of networking, connecting, messaging, even post-event that, that we can't do with just kind of um, you know, a video experience. We need something else to kind of complement, supplement, you know, to be an additive to that, to create that human experience and connection. So those are just two stories of how we've been doing that. There are many, many more. I, I, I can imagine you have, you probably have hundreds and that's just from you and then the rest of your staff will have their own um, stories, to, stories to share about that. Um, and, and, and I love what you said, and that was one of the, one of the pools for me that gave me interest in your product was, was that connection because we've all had the experience, the webinar experience. Please watch this 45 minute video. <laughs> you know? there's, there's no engagement, there's no interaction, there's nothing that, that's going to keep you the active. But with this platform, I, I love what you said about nobifying. <laughs> it's been nobified. <laughs> so it's become a turn yeah. now. Be becoming you should, you should, everything, everything should be nobified now. PowerPoint, I can't even do PowerPoint anymore. I'm like, oh, where's my pool? Why, why can't I engage? Can I ask a question? Can I make a comment? <clears throat> I think the idea of notifying is that, you know, now with PowerPoints, with PowerPoints, you know, there's no data. If I send my PowerPoint to you and I don't know who looked at the data, what they thought of it, did they engage with it? Did they agree with it? Um, and so, you know, it's, it's still a very passive experience. And I think now with, you know, in the age of TikTok, you know, in the age of people wanting to create, wanting to be heard, wanting to voice their um, their points of view, and even especially in an organizational context, you know, we call it employee engagement. It's really important. I care a lot about what my people think about anything that we put out. I, I hate talking at them without hearing their response. And so, you know, the idea of nobifying something is taking something, your content, and putting it into the platform to be able to solicit and elicit engagement from other people whoever your audience is and, and and that's what makes you such a great leader and everybody that I've, I've, been, I've been to your office i've seen how everybody works and they engage and everybody loves being there okay and that must be a very strong reason why they do that is because you're not one of those leaders of telling people what to do rather than engaging in the conversation and getting feedback and become part of the team part of the family <clears throat> The nobifying family, which I love, uh, I love the term. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use it actually, to be honest, and confuse a few Absolutely. people <laughs> until they get to know what it means. Um, so, so, so you're very much into the innovation of how we communicate, okay? Um, and you've done an absolutely fantastic job, and you're always like, as far as I'm concerned, in my research that I've done, you're like two steps ahead of everybody else in the marketplace, okay? That at least two steps ahead of everybody else in the marketplace. So, um, what I've loved about what you do is that on your platform you have created this engagement between people and it looks it, it doesn't look okay it feels very facebook-ish instagram-ish kind of thing but the beautiful thing about it is that it's not just random comments hey look this is what i had for lunch and this is a flower i saw in the garden <laughs> it's 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 talking about knowledge it's like you know what? this is what i just learned this is my thoughts about it and then people engage and becomes what you call blended learning so if you can speak a little bit about the blended learning uh, model that will be wonderful Sure, sure. Um, I, and of course, as you know, it's probably one of the biggest trends. So there was already, you know, pre-COVID, there was already kind of blended learning, the ma massive shift, um, because people are recognizing that sitting in a three-day workshop and then nothing else happening is not the most effective. So there was already a shift to offline, online, and now people are doing virtual blended learning. So now what they're doing with virtual blended learning is that the Zoom or, you know, the, the Google Hangouts is replacing the face-to-face -face element of the blended experience. And then they're using platforms like Novi in order to connect the dots um, pre, during, post. 
um, I would say, workshop or webinar experience so that you're having the ability to connect with your colleagues before you even join. During the webinar, instead of just getting slides, you're doing polls and you're interacting and doing actions together. And then I would say even more importantly, post the daily habit forming stuff on the job where now you're taking that. That's a truly blended and extended virtual experience so that it's being embedded into your daily habits. And when that starts to happen, that's when your mindset starts to shift and you start to see massive improvements in performance um, in the organization. You know, and as a leader, I, I always say this, I don't really care that much what my people know. I care what they do and apply and execute in order for us to perform. And <laughs> I'm sure you're not alone in that. <laughs> and I think in order to do that, they have to know some things. But I'm not satisfied just to know that they watched 10 videos. Like, I just don't care. You know, if you watch 10 videos, but that 10 videos result in driving high performance, awesome. Go watch those 10. Go watch 20 videos. But that connection point is what I call that blended experience. And, um, and, and so that's really, I would say, this part of it is in some ways way more valuable than just the content, the knowledge bits of it, which is where like the think, apply, share is that whole blended experience. Uh, I can't help but, okay, we've been speaking about uh, corporate and organizations and helping employees and, and leaders, etc. Yeah. But I can't help but also think of the amazing applications or relevance it could have for education. So uh, can you share if you've had any uh, engagement with education people or, or uh, thought leaders in education, et cetera, to adopt this platform? Sure. So I'll talk to you. There's two levels. I think one is, um, you know, I think one of the really sad truths is that during this uh, period, 1.5 billion young people were not able to go to school. Um, in Japan, the public school system pretty much shut down during COVID. Why? One of the biggest root causes of why it shut down was because of teacher capability on digital skills. A lot of the teachers did not know how to digitize and move their content and do facilitated, powerful virtual experiences and got overwhelmed. And so there was a freeze, right? And, you know, obviously, you know, in crisis, some people freeze, right? Some people fight, you know, so there was a freeze. And um, so one of the things that we've been doing is we have an academic advisory um, body. Um, I told you I was a nerd, right? You know, with professors from Harvard Business School, um, the former dean of IMD, um, uh, Dominic Terpan, as well as the former dean of NTU Business School. So we have Asia, US, Europe. We kind of got the regions covered. They're on our academic um, accreditation and advisory board. And we basically launched the mobile instructional design accreditation program for trainers and educators to help upskill um, uh, up them on how to think digitally. And, and imagine if you're designing for this little tiny device, the smartphone, you have to reimagine your content. You can't deliver it the same way as you did when you were in a physical class with 40 students, right? So I think the reimagining of that is a, is, is a knowledge. It's also a skill. It's a, it's a mindset. So we basically launched that at that level with education. At the next level is we've partnering with, you know, dozens of universities and higher educational institutions around the world. We now partner with, I think, almost uh, most of the, um, of the institutes of higher learning in Singapore. We have clients like Stanford, um, you know, Southern Louisiana College in the U.S. I mean, just literally globally. And they uh, are both our content partners where they really create amazing content NTU just launched a suite of data analytics courses, uh, which is amazing. And then we also have, um, so we, as we partner with our academic partners, they have amazing content. And so they're able to help partner with us to create content to upskill and reskill general public, as well as, of course, organizations. To be perfectly honest with you, I, I had no idea. I found that absolutely fascinating what you just said right now. I was thinking about how, It'll be easier for the children to engage because of the, the use of the platform that they're used to, etc. But I, had, I, I didn't even occur to me about the skills that teachers need to have to now reinvent how to yeah. deliver their content. That, that, yeah. that blew my mind, to be honest. Sorry. Every single, every single day, we're talking to business schools, higher education deans and presidents. Um, you know, there is a, a fantastic uh, video by Scott Galloway, Professor Scott Galloway. 
he says that higher education is on a death march. 20 to 40 percent, he's predicting 20 to 40 percent of higher education will be gone um, in the next couple of years as a result of this, unless they reinvent themselves. So this is a matter of survival for the education industry. This is not a nice to have anymore. Okay, so uh, I'm sure some people will, will, will take that comment and be afraid by it, by like, you know, the death march sounds very ominous. But other people will be like, well, thank goodness it's on a death march because things needed to change. <laughs> things needed to change. The old way needs to die and we need to create this new way. And that's where people like you come in and that's where the summit comes in to be able to help people to like, you know what, this is what's coming next. Um, I don't think we actually covered it. So I think a few people might be confused um, about the fact that your platform is on a mobile phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's a, it, yeah. Um, so the image next to me. So it's a it's um, a mobile first web enable. It's on. It's available on all devices. I think that, it, but it was uniquely designed for the mobile experience. So the best experience of Nobi is in the phone, and uh, we're. Um, I'm proud to say that we're literally the world's first content library that was designed for the mobile first experience. So Novi Learn has a couple hundred courses now that anyone can take. And we're really the world's first. And um, I think last checked, the largest library that was designed for this type of learning. The other kind of online learning libraries were designed for the web. And then it was adapted to the mobile phone, mobile responsive design. Very different user experience. I, I can attest to that. It is a very, very different experience because it, when, when you use Novi on your phone, you're like, this just feels right, <laughs> okay? Rather than why is this not working? Because we we spend we spend um, you know hours a day on our phone, and one of the massive differences in mobile first design is that we touch it. It's tactile experience. We touch our phones all the time. So in a mobile first like a Nobi experience, you're touching, 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 touching. That creates an emotional connection with with that content in a way that you won't get on a web on on a PC. It's very psychological and people underestimate and they think that if I just put my content and let it be visible on mobile, that's mobile design. No, it's not. Right? The mobile first design um, solicits kind of the ways that we use our phone in the tactile way, which then basically creates this experience and this engagement that you don't even realize why you're on your phone all the time. You don't, you don't look at your phone like this. You're like this. You're touching it. And that's a very different engagement than just watching it. A absolutely, absolutely. And, and when I first heard about the, the mobile first design, I was like, yeah, but you know, I can't be sitting all day on my mobile phone. And then you guys solved that problem as well by saying, you know what, you don't have to sit all day because all of our learning is micro learning. It's in small sound bites, like two, three, four minutes max and you finish a module you finish a section you finish whatever necessary so it becomes very easy to let go pick up again let go pick up again and not lose your momentum absolutely and i, I think the idea of you know this whole um kind of micro learning it's interesting um it's not it's a, it's a new trend so if you talk about future and the future of talent and future of work micro learning in 2019 became all of a sudden became like a big trend so a few years ago when we met, you know, if, if it was people were like, what micro learning, what is that? People are going to learn on their phone. What is that? Right. So it was, it was quite disruptive at the time. Now everyone's like, of course we're going to do micro learning because in 2019, all these global market research studies came out and micro learning is one of the biggest trends. Like the mobile one is still taking a little bit of time. You know, interestingly enough, even though 71% of organizations prefer kind of mobile uh, micro learning because of the engagement. Now, we've been doing micro-learning for thousands of years. Do you know that? We just didn't know. <laughs> do, do you know what we call it in, um, in business? No. Top-down communication. No. Bullet points. Right? Yes. We, you know, remember, so, all the, so bullet points and top-down communication is a form of micro-learning. Our brains cannot process 100 pages of content. We need it to be broken down into bite-sized pieces for effective retention. That's why when we sit in an eight-hour class, we can only remember about 
That's very true. And, and when, when I came to your office and I was speaking with one of your colleagues about it, he, he explained to me the engagement, how, uh, uh, because you have all the analytics, you know, uh, Nobi obviously uh, uh, measures everything, has all the statistics about who watched what, how long were they there, how long were they engaged, etc. And the engagement went to a phenomenal amount. I'm not going to say the figures, you'll be more familiar with those, um, but it literally blew my mind. So, so yeah. what was the increase in engagement because of that platform and the way, it, the, the tactile experience? 10 to 15 times higher. Okay, so if anybody's watching this that have been trying to engage people to learn a few things, would you like your business to, <laughs> and your attention to increase by 10 to 15 times? Look into this. And as uh, So Young said, in 2019, before two, we met before 2019 and we were talking about micro learning and people were like, what, what, what? And now it's become uh, yeah. commonplace. So I was not joking. They were always forward thinking. They were always innovating to get, you know, uh, to get better, to take advantage of new technologies, new but also not just new technologies, but also the psychological aspect of what are the habits that people have, what are the trends that we have. And actually, we have an amazing thing to give to you from Suyang, which I'm very grateful for because you've heard a lot about this Nobi now and you'll probably like, what's this about and how can I do this? It's probably really expensive and whatever it is. Suyang is actually allowing you guys to get some free access to the Nobi platform. Okay, and also free access to, um, to an opportunity to participate in a global competition to win uh, a mobile instructional design accreditation. Okay, remember she spoke about the, the accreditation before and how to become certified and how to deliver content um, uh, dig digitally. This accreditation is worth about 5,000 USD. You can get an opportunity to win that or an iPhone 11. So either way, you're going to get a boost in your technology um, uh, quota <laughs> as such. So Soyan, can you just tell us a little bit about this, this amazing free gift that you're offering our viewers today? Sure. Um, you know, I think everyone, you know, has amazing expertise. And, you know, we believe in the democratization of knowledge and expertise. It's no longer about a, an expert or a teacher and a student. And we have to, you know, just learn. I think all of us have something to contribute and to communicate to the world. So this, can, this um, initiative is called Communicate with Impact, hashtag CWI. And so we're inviting all of your viewers um, to participate in that in our global competition where you can communicate with impact and you can basically participate, use the platform for free to unlimited number of users. Just try it. You can share it with your conferences, your classes, your workshops, whatever you're doing in order to communicate with impact. And, you know, hopefully, I guess the, the main objective is that we can power the things that you're doing already amazingly well as experts in your respective fields and to help you to better engage and communicate, um, you know, in this digital low-touch economy, right, uh, without losing the human touch, right? So, so we want to empower everyone to do that. So that's kind of the gift. On top of that, there's this, like, global competition, which is always for those who are a bit more competitive, you know, a little bit of carrot to <laughs> encourage those who are a bit more competitive to compete. Um, you know, we, we love to collaborate, you know, with, with people and empower the things that you're doing in extremely um, impactful ways. You know, you know we, we want to come alongside, you know, uh, you, you, you're the expert here, Angelo, and, and you know, your, your community of people, you're amazing speakers. Each of them have such amazing things to share with the world. And so um, that's kind of our gift, if you will, to the world to just use it, create, um, have fun, enjoy it. And, and, it's, and it certainly is fun because I have used your platform. And if the people are thinking, you know, I'm not tech savvy, I can't use this technology, the create, it is so easy. They have made it so easy. Everything's like drag and drop. What do you want to do? Multiple choice, drag and drop. You want to do an assignment, drag and drop. And it's, it's just, it's so intuitive, not just for the user experience, but also for the designer experience. So, so young, thank you so very, very much for sharing uh, with us today. Uh, I would love to continue talking with you for, uh, to, for as long as possible because you have all those golden nuggets of information and teaching and, and I've learned so much from you always. Um, so what's going to happen is I'm going to ask you very nicely, <laughs> I'll ask you very nicely that in the future when we do our summit on the future of communication and learning, we would love to invite you back to, to share with us uh, the newest developments in, in this field. Would that be okay? Absolutely. It's such a pleasure. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. And if you ask me, of course, I have to do it. <laughs> so I'd be happy to do it. 
And, um, and I'd love to learn about some of the things you're doing as well. So thank you so much for having me. It's been my absolute pleasure. Uh, don't worry, I'm going to put all the links in the descriptions on the on, on the page. You guys will be able to connect with Nobi and with So Young and with everybody. Um, they are global, so don't worry about that. I've got a, a huge global team as well, and I, I, I can't oh, I encourage you enough. To, I, oh, I forgot to say that you can communicate with Impact in any language you want, so it doesn't have to be in English. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. Yeah. So this can go yeah. to everybody in the world, and you've got people that can, you know, translate any, for like, you and everything? No, you, like, if you are listening to this, you know, to, you know, to the summit, and you're from, you know, um, from India, and you want to create, see, you know, your content in um, Tamil, go for it. You know, Urdu, you want to do Arabic, you want to do Japanese, Chinese, Korean, Spanish, go for it. You can author and create content in any language. Like I said, guys, I was not lying. Always forward thinking, always listening to the customers, always seeing what needs are, are, are there and how to solve those problems. So we will keep in touch. Uh, I, I will give you guys the, 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 the connections to get to uh, with Nobi. They're always putting out content everywhere on social media, uh, newsletters, etc., giving away some amazing things. So uh, the, the least I can do. And like I said on the summit, we're not selling anything. So you're getting that for free. Okay, you're getting that for free. Nothing's being sold. So jump on it. If you want to know what the future is like, if you're a content creator, if you want to share things, if you want to learn things, this is the best way to do it. So Young, thank you so much. I couldn't thank, be more grateful to you for coming today. No, thank you so much. I, I loved it. It was super fun. Thank you so much for having me.